It's November 18th, 1998, and another remarkable event is about to be uncovered by Aria, Rebecca, and Ali, the Retrospectors. Meet Joe Black was a meandering, expensive, and rather forgettable Brad Pitt vehicle that opened to little fanfare in November 1998, but its box office figures were inflated by the fact that it was one of a handful of films to run a trailer for the first Star Wars prequel, The Phantom Menace, whose rabid fans turned up, filmed the short, and then ran out of the cinema to upload their dodgy footage to the internet, a move that prompted Lucasfilm to release its own official trailer online today in history, thus changing how we consume film pre- previews forever. Yes, although can I just say, I would still rather any day of the week watch Meet Joe Black again than The Phantom Menace. <laughs> well, actually, guys, I, a lot of the coverage mentions Meet Joe Black, which, by the way, I spent my whole life getting it confused with Mighty Joe Young, and I'm not going to stop now. <laughs> but there were actually two other films that were released on the same day that also had Star Wars as their trailer. So I was just going to ask you quickly which one you would pick, right? Meet Joe Black, yeah. The Waterboy, and Adam The Siege. Sandler. The Siege, Denzel Washington? Yes. Oof. Yeah. I guess that. I mean, that looks like a mid-par action film, but it's, that's better than even the best Adam Sandler It's not movie. Waterboy, yeah. <laughs> um, well, and also it's a lot shorter. I mean, three hours. It seems like a cruel twist of fate to put this much-anticipated trailer. They put it at the beginning and the end mm. to try and entice people to stay and watch it yeah. a second time. But Meet Joe Black is three hours long. That's like so, so much longer than you would expect for that kind of film. <laughs> Which, by the way, is a thing that I only discovered researching this episode, that trailers were a yes. thing that used to come after... The film that you had seen, and yeah, that's why the we name, trailer. trailers. I just yeah. didn't know that. But yeah, the, they. Anyway, we're not year. here to talk about Meet Joe Black. We're here to talk about. <laughs> we'll save that for our Meet Joe Black episode. <laughs> we're here to talk about the incredible appetite there was for a return of the Star Wars trilogy, really, mm. because this was the prequel trilogy, the first of which was being released the following year. And what I find fascinating about this is I remember this period, 1998, the excitement amongst my peers mm. for the return of Star Wars. And yet. It had only been 15 years since Return of the Jedi at this point. Mm. So it has now been 24 years since the events we're describing. It's much, much longer since The Phantom Menace came out than there was a gap between the first three Star Wars movies and these ones. But the hype was absolutely off the chart. And imagine this. People went to buy a ticket to those films Rebecca mentioned just to see the trailer. You know, Arian's contention about sticking around in the cinema for three hours isn't relevant in a way because loads of people bought a ticket and then left. Yeah. Variety reported on a cinema in LA where two thirds of the audience, albeit a filmmaking <laughs> town, but two thirds of the audience in the cinema walked out after the trailer. They just turned up to catch it in their lunch hour. Uh, yeah, and the trailer was only shown at 75 selected screens across the US and Canada. So people were driving for hours to go to the cinema. People were taking time off work. They were skipping school just to come and see this for a film that wasn't due out for another six months but this was the first proper glimpse we're going to have of it a washington post article from the time by michael colton describes the experience of a group of high school kids who were among the first to see the trailer they bought their tickets to see meet joe black and he writes joel bergen's parents had the vietnam war the berlin wall and the civil rights movement he has the clone wars the republic of naboo and the dark side of the force so that's how big it was I mean, at least to the mega fans arguably as consequential a war in the history of the galaxy <laughs> the, the, yeah. the clone wars um but but also you the reason- see people gonna die <laughs> <laughs> i did not see any of us doing that accent in this show. <laughs> that wasn't on my bingo card. <laughs> but actually the reason why it was shown in so few cinemas was an artistic decision of sorts, that theatres had been chosen for their screen size and the quality of their digital sound equipment. And yet what happened to it was it was being filmed on these by you know, contemporary standards, really ancient camcorders and then uploaded to the internet. So the quality that people were ultimately seeing this was much less than had the powers that be just made the decision to release this in more cinemas in the first place. Well, that brings us to the thing that actually happened on this day, mm -hmm. because it was on the 17th that the trailer was released to cinemas yesterday. It was on this day in 1998 that the trailer was also uploaded to starwars.com. So people were able to see 
in quality now that seems like very insubstantial mm. in the world of streaming 4K, but were able to download a copy of this trailer uh, in real video, QuickTime, and AVI format to their desktop computer. <laughs> um, and it, it's kind of that, rather than the release in cinema. The release in cinema was like a, a, a pre-film hype mechanic mm. that had been used before, you know, a trailer's out. What was different about this was after it was released on the internet on this day, it created what we have now, which is a world of people going to YouTube to watch film trailers before YouTube existed. Mm. You know, there was iTunes trailers, there was Ain't It Cool, but there was nothing set up to truly meet the appetite, especially in this sci-fi genre, of rabid fans wanting to watch trailers. Mm. Yeah, and you wouldn't have been able to analyse very much from the trailer if you downloaded the version that was made available on this day because it was really grainy, the sound was tinny, and it crucially, it was the, about the size of a stamp. That was the size of the mm. video that you'd be watching. So, And it probably took hours had, to download as well. Exactly. <laughs> so it's not like you could glean a whole lot from this. It's just, you know, and as you're saying, this is before YouTube. The idea now of a Star Wars fan not being able to analyse the trailer frame <laughs> by frame in the privacy yeah. of their own home is so it's bizarre. Basic but, human right being yeah. deprived. <laughs> yeah, quite. You know, but it speaks to the way that the strategy for promoting the film in 1998 was still based around the idea that a trailer was specifically something that you saw at the cinema. It was basically to give you some ideas about mm. what you might want to see at your next trip to the cinema. You know, in the days when people with disposable income often went to the cinema, you know, at least once a week, if not multiple times a week. Four months after this particular trailer came out, Lucasfilm actually partnered with Apple for the release of the second trailer, and they released it alongside QuickTime software. And Steve Jobs at the time called the launch an enormous coup because QuickTime was downloaded more than 600,000 times that day on the day that this second trailer was released. And it was the biggest download ever at the time, with 6.4 million downloads over the next three weeks. Yeah, according to Empire at the time, the trailer created, quote, online congestion not seen since the publication of the Star Report. <laughs> Which is like the most 90s possible reference. But anyway, it did have a pretty big brand to trade on, didn't it? Right. I mean, it's, it's easy for it to be the most impactful trailer of all time because actually it was the beginning of... Kind of the franchise as we know it now. Mm. Every movie essentially being made for 14-year-old boys. And it triggers every possible point, skillfully, but it triggers them. You know, you hear John Williams' original Star Wars theme. Yeah. You see the font exactly how you want it. You see young Anakin. You see Yoda. You see the double saber. Ooh, double saber. <laughs> yeah, it's like... You couldn't have made an original trailer like that because there was a time that all films were new ideas trying to sell you something interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Ollie, do you, do you know who you sound like? You sound like 25-year-old Scott Chitwood who was quoted in the Washington Post on this day saying, the internet's going nuts over this trailer. Everything we gossiped about, what Darth Maul looks like, for instance, is shown. <laughs> <laughs> a huge amount of the hype for the trailer had come from online forums, which is kind of ironic considering that the release was so non-optimised for the internet but you know obviously like as you mentioned it had been a relatively long time since the original trilogy and it was these message boards that were keeping you know keeping the franchise warm if you like the the forums are a huge source of buzz for what was already an unprecedentedly buzzy film but it was also one of the first instances of the online community doing something that now we associate with any good franchise you know it had yeah. an online fandom mm. people use the sort of burgeoning internet social space to swap their theories to talk about their favorite characters and to share ideas for new stories as well and new scripts this was and i looked this up on chance and i was really pleased to find out that it did work out this year was the same year that fanfiction.net was launched and to this day star wars is by far the most written about franchise in the movie section it has more stories than the avengers that's the second one obviously the the uh, marvel one not the one with you know joanna lumley yeah. um <laughs> It has 58.6 thousand original works of fiction written by fans. And the first one was posted on the 9th of November, 1998, nine days before this day. Do you know, if you'd mm. said 58.6 billion, I would have believed it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, I looked up the trailer on YouTube today and looking at even the first couple of comments are from people nostalgically remembering the experience of seeing this trailer at the time. And one of them, a guy yeah, called... It, but the trailer? Rem yeah. the, the, the nostalgically remembering the experience of seeing More the trailer, than, not the film. Well, because I suppose the film was such a, a disappointment. Yeah. <laughs> when you get to the film itself, you know, here's the Rolling Stone review. The actors are wallpaper, the jokes are juvenile, there's no romance, and the dialogue lands with the thud of a computer instruction manual. Yeah. <laughs> but when you get to the trailer, everyone was like, oh, yeah. this amazing. Is 
I'm 14 again. <laughs> this is the thing. The trailer exists in this pure moment that was yeah. just <laughs> hype and excitement before. I mean, it's a nice callback to a time when Star Wars fans actually liked something about Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, before yeah. George Lucas revealed himself to be massively out of ideas and ready to sell to the highest bidder, which is what... Oh, no. <laughs> they walk among us, Harry, and I can tell. And so another week of retrospecting ends. But next week begins a day early at Club Retrospectors. Join us now to get an exclusive episode every Sunday. Patreon.com slash retrospectors. Part of the ACAST Creator Network.